we have Instagram with us over here, we have LinkedIn, we have YouTube, we're ready to go for today's live stream. Um, let me pull up what we're going to be talking about today so that I don't forget to tell you any of the juicy details because this is another big one. Today, we are going to be talking about the top reason that you struggle in leadership. And you're probably going to think it has to do with maybe time management or organizational skills or your team or your leadership or staffing or all of the other things that you really don't have any control over. But the thing is, the number one reason why you struggle with leadership is due to your mindset. Failure to approach the work that you do with a good mindset is a guaranteed marker that you will hardly ever achieve long-term success. And if you do, what you're going to find is that things that could be a little bit easier in your career progression could be much more easy. <laughs> um, and good leaders can develop crappy mindsets at any time. So I also want you to recognize that you could be a good leader and going through a circumstance or a situation or just be in a season of life and career where you just may have a crappy mindset. And it's not something that you usually notice. It's something that slowly and insidiously creeps in on your leadership style. So for today's episode, I want us to take a deeper look into how poor mindset can um, be the top. It is actually the top reason that you struggle with leadership. Again, we've only been, this is day five of our live streams. For those of you that are not familiar with me, I'm Yashika. I'm the founder and CEO of The Lynn Group, where um, for me, my personal mission is to help leaders lead with impact and do it in a way that's less stressful. But I have a team behind me and we also not only help healthcare organizations with leadership development, but we also help them by lending our expertise to help them um, deliver their uh, healthcare in a more optimal way. So that is what I do just very briefly. So let's get into the topic because whether you think it matters or um, not, or whether you are a new leader or you're the owner of your own enterprise, be it a chiropractor, dentist, what have you, your mindset has the majority of weight on the outcomes that you experience in your day-to-day -day life. So of course, not only just professionally, like we talk about here, but this also has to do with your personal life. And you don't need a great mindset just for yourself. It helps for you to show up for yourself and be in an optimal mindset. But as a leader, you also have an influence on your team's outcomes. And more importantly, you have influence over the outcomes that your patients or your clients may experience as well. So what I want to do is break down some common piss poor mindset habits in an effort to help you gain some more self-awareness of if you have any of these problems. For some of you, because you also have this sort of mindset in your personal life and you have grown up with people that have this similar mindset to what you have, you may not even know that some of the things that you are bringing into your professional life and your personal life are piss poor habits that are going to impact your success in a negative way. So the first thing is seeing the glass half empty. And we all know that there are certain instances where we may lean a little bit negative in our life. However, what I tend to see when I'm working with leaders is not that they think or are aware that they're being downright negative. They think that they have to point out the bad all the time. Maybe it's the bad in every initiative or every creative idea that comes up or they try to point out the bad because they think that that's the, what motivates people to do better or to improve. And you have to understand that when you are impact, when you are injecting negativity, even if you think that you aren't, and you know, by learning some of these things, you'll know a little bit better if you are, if you are doing these things, you are impacting the success of your team members and the success of the projects that are going on in your organization. And nothing, nothing, nothing will slow your progress like a negative mindset. Number two is assuming that you know people better than you do, especially if you 
you know, as you go through these lessons that I'm doing over the course of the 21 days and what you're finding is that a lot of these things you didn't learn, you probably have made the mistake of thinking that you know your team, you know people better than you do, you label them, you put them in a box, and you haven't really had to, the chance to get to know the members of your team in a more um, intimate but appropriate way, right? <laughs> or know the the peers that you work with on an appropriate way. They're, because People are very complex. And how can you truly get to know people if you already think that you know how certain people think um, based on the meetings you attend or how certain people are personality wise based on the level of surface interactions that you have with them. So that's uh, something that you also may be mistakenly doing. Another thing is go, go, going. And I find that when leaders think that they constantly need to take on a whole bunch of stuff. It's not because they want to do all this stuff. They usually start to get tired, burnt out, and have resentment. So let's think about the mindset of you, you if you're a person that thinks that you have to continue to take things on all the time, knowing that you probably need time off. <laughs> You may, um, I think that that stems from a level of insecurity. And for all of us, it's going to be different. Insecurity of not doing enough, insecurity of losing your job, insecurity of needing to feel like you have to prove yourself, all of the things. But um, if you feel like you need to be on all the time, you have to understand and you probably will find out sooner or later that it's impossible to be going 24 seven and still be the best leader that you can be. So that is harmful. That is a harmful mindset, even though you may feel that you're being productive and you're being helpful. Uh, perfectionism. This can go along with what we talked about yesterday around how poor decisions cost you your job. Sometimes perfectionism is our goal as leaders, even though that's unattainable. It doesn't exist. It should never be your goal. And when you're trying to... Um, aim to be perfect, make the right decisions, never make a mistake, never go outside the box, do things the safe way, um, never get in trouble. You ultimately are either, you ultimately are setting yourself up for failure. Um, and that failure could be around the inaction that we talked about yesterday, but it also could just be because you're setting this unattainable standard for yourself, which can be exhausting and it can be demoralizing as well. Let's see what else to have for you. Um, isolation. And again, we did talk about this yesterday that and a couple of our sessions touched on this topic of us needing to understand that we are not leading on an island. But yet some of us believe that leadership means that you don't need to be among the people. You don't need to get to know your peers in your organization. It means that you're trying to keep your head down and do the job to your best of your ability. And if you are a leader that doesn't want to get help, doesn't want to interact and form a relationship with others, I feel like that's one of the most dangerous things that you can do in your leadership. Because part of being a leader, you can't be a leader if you are just in your own little bubble, closing yourself off in your office, trying to get through the day. When leadership is particularly about connecting, engaging, networking, empowering, and you can't do that if you're not interacting with other people within your team and within your organization. Um, let's see. Uh, let's do one more. <laughs> I have a, a. There's a bunch of things that I could talk about. Have you know? having to do with your mindset and why it gets you in trouble. But here's another one. And if you want even more information about leadership, about mindset and, and tips and tools, I did a podcast episode about this and the podcast is primarily about this. So check out the Leading in Healthcare podcast if you want more tips. But for our last tip for the day, it's believing that you have to do everything yourself. And I think that that goes hand in hand with um, thinking that you have to be on all the time. You probably became a leader because you were really good at what you did and you have the potential. You got to check it though. You have the potential to be good at what it is that you do now. But the truth is 
you're not supposed to be doing it all. As a leader, you are supposed to be in this position where you are inspiring and pulling strings for other people to collaborate and to help work toward a mission. So great leaders not only are not doing all the work themselves, but they are very comfortable delegating, which not only helps you, but it helps your team feel empowered and it involves them in the work. So if you want things done your way, if that's what your fear is, then you could teach other people what your standards are within reason, no micromanaging. But bottom line is, if you think you have to do everything yourself, that's a harmful mindset. It's going to catch up with you. And it's probably, um, uh, it's a good reason why I end up working with leaders and, and they complain about being overwhelmed is because they think they have to do everything themselves. So I've given you some kind of clues you could start to look at for more self-awareness, self-reflection about your mindset and, and how you approach the work that you do and why if you have some of these traits, you probably are approaching your leadership with a sub optimal attitude. So let's just talk briefly about one thing that you can start to put into action right now to help you to turn this around. And it's something that I learned about you, you guys. I don't know if you know, but I have been in school for a very long time. So I learned these things and then they just pop up and I can't remember where I learned them. So what I don't want to do is always take credit for other people's work. But the problem is I can't cite the work. So anyway, there is this one thing that you can do if you tend to have a, a piss poor attitude or not a good mindset in your leadership practice. And it, it's about remembering that when you are trying to execute anything, whether that be executing you finishing the day optimally or executing a project, whatever it is, there are three components to doing that successfully. And it's not just getting in there and taking action. It's about having alignment around what it is that you need to do, whether it's alignment to you being a leader for that day, whether it's alignment of the team, whether it's alignment around the project, and if it aligns with the goals that you are trying to uh, achieve to help your organization or your company or whatever. So you need to have alignment, you need to have mindset, and you need to have the capabilities. And if you don't have all three, then you need to come back to the drawing board. Now, a lot of the time, um, alignment is the understanding of, um, a lot of times we have an understanding of where as an organization we're going, because depending on the level of leadership you're at, you're either working with other leaders to create the vision for the year, for the quarter, for the organization, for your company, whatever. But if you um, are not as high up, the the information gets pushed down on you, down to you, not on you, could feel on you, um, usually by way of a packet or a yearly leadership meeting, what have you. So you have to understand not just what you want to occur in your company, but also where your company or is going and if what is going on is in alignment with that. So number one is alignment. Have a very clear vision of where you're going. But I, I want to break it down just to your personal practice as a leader. Have a very clear vision of who you are as a leader, how you want your days to go, how you want your team to feel, what is important to you, what's important to your team. Like that's where you can start because that's what you have control over. So alignment. Second thing is the mindset. So you can be completely aligned, right? You, you know who you are, you know who you want to be, you know what things want to look like, you know where your organization is headed. And you can know the five-year plan, the one-year plan, the quarterly goals, all of that. However, if you don't believe in it, if you don't believe in yourself, if you can't get your team to believe in it, the mindset piece, then it's not going to work out. You have to be aligned and you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your abilities. You have to believe in your team. You have to believe in your organization in order to make things move optimally. And then the last thing that I talked about was that you also have to have the skills and the tools to get there. We oftentimes when we work on projects, the two things that I see people do is look at, is this in alignment what we want to get done for today? Yeah. 
do we have the skills and do we have the capability? Or if not, let's get the right people in the room. Boom. But what we don't check is the mindset. So whenever you are approaching your day, a project, your team, an initiative, I want you to always ask yourself, you can even do this in your personal life. Is everything aligned? Is the mindset there? And are the skills and tools there? And if you pause every time you're about to execute, every time you're about to start your day, every time you're about to do something with your family and you look at those three things and make sure they're on point, you you minimize your chances of struggling not only in leadership, but just struggling energetically in life, period. All right. So I would love to hear your thoughts or comments you have related to today's topic. Make sure that you spread the word. Um, because like I always say, as leaders in healthcare, we uh, don't get lessons like these to teach us how to be great leaders. So make sure you do that and make sure you come back tomorrow, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time for this live stream. And if you would like any reminders, make sure that you text the word leadership. Let me put the banner up. I always do this. Make sure you text the word leadership to the phone number 833-231-4407 to get reminders for the live stream. Last thing, tomorrow's topic should be very interesting. They all are very interesting. I hope you're seeing a trend of me giving you information that nobody is sharing with you about how you could be a better leader. But tomorrow's topic, your stress is killing you fast. And I didn't say slowly, killing you slowly. Your stress is killing you fast. So tune in tomorrow for more, for a deeper dive on stress and how it is actually killing you fast. All right. Take care, everybody. <laughs> Bye.